is something our next guest often talks about, and he pinpointed this euphoria, this peak in positive social mood back in 1998 as a reason why the European Union was destined for disintegration. He's Robert Prechter. Found First of all, Robert Prechter, welcome to the show. Thanks for being back on Capital Account of Europe since 1998. I mean, a long time ago. And despite everything we've seen, you still think that we have a few more years, several years, before we could reach a bottom. So what are we looking at in terms of declines here? <clears throat> well, you know, most people are looking at... Figure out when this is the bottom. Is it political developments or economic developments or a certain measure of unemployment? You know what, Lauren? It's the opposite of the things that we saw in 1990. It's from the Eurozone and a breakup, and until then, we haven't seen a bottom. Yeah, but it's not just that. I mean, pessimistic symbols. There's a chart that you feature in your report where you point to deterioration in confidence in banks as measured, in your view, by the decline in deposits. Yeah, uh, European Union has been depending on month and global markets perspective in the forecast. You called for the rebirth of a global bear market. And then what did we see in May? The Dow plunged uh, equity prices. How does that factor into your prognosis? Well, think about this. No amount uh, of printing or stimulus that central banks can do to avoid the kind of deflation you see coming? Well, if they just ran the... Come, these technocrats trying to uh, pull the levers. Although uh, so. that pessimism that you, that you said we've seen in hints, there's lots of reasons to be pessimistic about America's finance, uh, chronic trade and budget deficits being just one, uh, the debt debates we've seen, plenty of reasons. Despite this, what we see is these record lows that, that Treasury yields have been hitting against. Uh, on Friday, we saw a record-setting low for, for the 10-year Treasury yield that, that I think we have to show break, how low you think Treasury yields can go in the interim. So hold on, right yields, these, these record lows that we've seen for 10-year Treasury yields as just one benchmark. So you predict that ultimately we will see interest rates rise. But in the interim, how low do you think we could see these Treasury yields go? always a game of probabilities and, and we can't sit here with a crystal yeah. ball and pinpoint it but I am right. I am wondering you know for anybody who follows Elliott Wave as I know some of our viewers do or who want to what has been your success with timing and and how has that helped you or your investors or your readers rather with with their investments well let me give you a good example. Um, two months ago. So much I want to get to. So I do want to ask you about okay. a couple of other things that you've been talking about, which are really interesting. And one has to do with, with the stock market, which we've been talking a bit about. But in your report, you cited a Gallup survey that found that roughly 53% of households are still in the markets. So that's, I guess, as of April. Now, this figure is down from 65% in 2007. Is this number still high in your view? And how long do you expect it to go, how low, rather, uh, before we reach a long-term bottom? That's historically the most hyped IPO that we've seen in, in such a while, it seems. We have some headlines showing just how excited the media was, at least, about this IPO. And then, of course, we know what happened. It face planted. I think the stock was down around. It's not right. People are still too willing to jump aboard something new. And uh, in addition to, to the Facebook IPO, we just have a second here, but uh, we have seen a trend of just far fewer IPOs, and they've delivered less in, in that initial IPO. So what is that significant of to you? That's a result of the... want to talk about. We're going to have to have you on again as soon as possible, because there's That's more good. to discuss, but I really appreciate you being on the show. All right, before we leave, let's wrap up with a little bit of loose change. Dimitri and Shannon... Uh, what's going on? Let's talk about it. The New York Times is reporting that J.P. Morgan officials uh, ignored warnings last year that could have kept them from this. <laughs> that was his euphemistic explanation that has now become infamous. Now, a small group of shareholder advocates called CTW Investment Group said the bank's risk controls needed to be improved, and J.P. Morgan officials dismissed the warnings. So how shocking we find out that the bank ignored risk warnings. But meanwhile, we've also received news that J.P. Morgan returned $600 million in funds held at the bank when MF Global collapsed. So are we seeing here kind of a, a tit for tat, maybe? Maybe JP Morgan's trying to, you know, give a little uh, carrot here to avoid some of the sticks coming from this direction. Well, I, what I found. So I'm talking about bullfighting. Reuters reports a small town voted in a referendum to keep its budget for bullfighting and the other festivities and not divert part of the money into a jobs program. So maybe they just know that it's not the government's 
role to create jobs that they're no good at it and they'd rather just have their bullfighting which they enjoy yeah and besides if people want bullfighting bull they, they exactly. just don't want to be deprived of their one joy in life exactly. a, a, a major cultural and, thing that they enjoy even if it is pretty brutal you can't calculate uh you know um quality of life and these guys this is part yeah. of their quality of life bullfighting you know it may not be for you and me pink socks red capes and bulls Dying and stuff bulls. but all well, right. Maybe these guys like it. All right. I mean? Maybe they do. Let's leave it there because that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching and please come back and watch our show tomorrow. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Lauren Lister and give us feedback on the show at youtube.com slash capital account. You should also subscribe if you haven't. Plus, you can catch our show in HD on Hulu at hulu.com slash capital dash account. And from everyone here, thanks for watching and have a great night.